Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so today we're gonna jump into a video that kind of covers several things. We got our big old Class A amplifier project. We need a preamp to drive that. Well, so I got a video to uh, basically be a tutorial for microcap uh, to help us maybe build a preamp that we can use for that and to kind of study and to learn how preamps work, okay? They're similar to amp, you know, power amplifiers, except for they're not power, they're lower signal. But they're still amplifiers, and so they're similar in operation. Uh, maybe simpler in some ways, maybe not. Um, now this is a really simple circuit. Let's just go over this. I just want to go over some concepts, because then I'm going to show you the circuit that we're going to uh, uh, look at. Now this is a... One of our viewers, Dash Puppy, he sent in a schematic to me and wanted to see how we can simulate that. And I thought, man, you know, he's an audio guy. Uh, he's got this preamp design, and I think he's going to send me a board. So we'll build that up and test it with this amplifier, okay? That'd be pretty cool. Now, what we want to do is do a simulation today, kind of get to know microcap a little bit better, especially if you don't have a lab. You can you know, if you got a computer, you can pull up that and and play around with it and do simulations. But to understand the circuit, I just want to go over some concepts, okay? Now, I drew this pretty simple. We have our output voltage, we have our input, and our plus V and, and ground, okay? And then we have, this is our source of our FET, so that's our uh, resistor and source circuit, and this is the drain of the FET. This is the gate of the FET, okay? And this is our RN. So right now we can just pretend that's, and it would be a small value, but we'll just say that's a really small value, and this is a big value. Those aren't really going to play too much into what we're talking about here. They're just, eh, I could have left them off actually, okay? Mainly what we want to talk about is this. This is a Class A uh, preamplifier, so that means this guy is going to be conducting all the time. He's just going to be running all the time. And then he's going to wiggle when he gets a signal over here. He's going to wiggle up and down. But he's not going to turn on and off. So he's class A. Okay. So that means we have to run enough current through here to keep him running hot. And enough current that he can power up this output without robbing his signal here. And changing gain parameters and that kind of thing. Okay. All right, so let's just make the math easy. And um, I think I want to start off, let's just say that we're going to, uh, it's a little bit on the low side, but let's just say it takes two volts from gate to source to turn this guy on. Well, without that resistor there, and we put, say, 12 volts over here, he's going to turn that on easily, just slam it on, and this voltage is going to drop right down to ground. So that signal, as far as voltage swing, here's a couple questions about this circuit. What's our voltage swing and what's our gain? Well, he could pull right down to ground. And if there's enough current, he can, you know, provide, you know, he can sink or source whatever current down here, no problem, okay? Now, then let's say this guy turns off, he gets pulled up, and if there's not any current to our output, then this voltage would be right at our output. But, of course, we're going to have some current. We're going to have something to drive. So there'd be some current going through RD. So this swing could not quite get to V+. Plus. And actually, it can't quite get to ground because there's going to be some voltage drop across this transistor. Okay? So, the, I mean, I'm just saying those are the extreme cases. If this guy wasn't there and if we had very low, you know, if we are driving this guy, just slamming him on and off. Okay? The other thing is, is this guy goes on, this guy goes down. 180 degree phase shift. That's going to be important when I show you the rest of the circuit. Um, okay. Now this guy, putting him in there is like negative feedback or degenerative feedback or whatever. Because as current comes here, he develops a voltage here. That voltage subtracts from the voltage from here to what this guy can supply, right? So if we got 12 volts here... And let's say this guy took two volts to turn on. Uh, to turn him on, we need two volts there, so we end up with 10 volts here. If we have a lot of current going through there and this voltage wants to get bigger than that, 
then he's going to take away the voltage we have here that this guy can provide and he'll start to turn them off. So essentially he's, he self-regulates himself because as he turns on, he'll put current in here. This current will subtract from what the drive current has to give and he kind of balances out, right? Um, any more current, he would turn off the FET. Any less current, he turns on the FET more. So he, he sits and regulates himself. Okay, that's an important concept that'll come up later. All right, so now let's just go into, let's just say we're gonna drive one amp through here. So he's just running hot. And then we're gonna, some of that current, we're gonna trickle off to, to, to swing. So this class A, so that means he's on all the time. We're taking the output right here. And let's say he's roughly half the voltage from here to here, okay? So let's uh, say we got 20 volts here because we need uh, 10 volts to drop across this resistor. Okay, so we're gonna drop 10 volts across these two parts. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's take another step because it'll play into our next phase of the circuit better. Let's say that we've got 30 volts here. So we got 10 here, 10 across our transistor, and 10 across here, okay? We got one amp going through here, and we're gonna say we got 10 ohms here, 10 ohms here, and that'll mean that this guy will force this guy to drop 10 volts so that he doesn't get any more than one amp through him. Otherwise, uh, you know, he's self-regulating, right? So he's creating one amp here, and if we only have 10 ohms here, 10 ohms there, we got 10 volts, 10 volts, and we have to have 10 volts there. So we got the voltage split up in thirds, all right? So this guy just run along, and then we wiggle this a little bit, and we get a little bit of wiggle over here. Now over here, we'll probably have to have a, a capacitor to strip off this DC voltage, so all we get through is AC to our amplifier, right? Or the amplifier has a capacitor on the input to do the same thing. But we have to strip off that DC. Well, all right. Um, we could make this circuit work where this guy was more like zero volts instead of uh, he's going to be sitting here at 20 volts, right? Because there'll be 10 volt drop here, so it'll be sitting here at 20 volts, and then when you get a signal here, here, then you'll start to wiggle. Well, uh, now the most he can ever wiggle is about 10 volts, because this guy can turn on and off, and if we can only get one amp here, we can do less than one amp, but you know, so this guy can't wiggle a whole lot. Uh, now, here's another principle that this has to do with the gain. What's the gain of the circuit? Well, if we have a wiggle here, we're going to get the same voltage drop here and the same voltage drop there. So now this right here is kind of a, an unknown thing right now. Okay, There's actually a lot of gain here. So this guy can pretty much disappear compared to what's going to happen here. Okay, but so let's just see what happens. If we change this resistor, let's say we change this resistor to half the size. So instead of 10 ohms, it's five ohms. Well, if there's one amp going through here, there's only five volts here now. So this guy goes up. Well, a steady state, I mean, you know, this guy was sitting here at zero. Let's say there's no signal. So now instead of sitting at 20, now he goes up to five. Well, I mean, there's only five volt drop, so he goes up to 25. And this guy's at 30. Now he can only swing at the very most from 25 to 30. So he has less swing. So he's taken away some gain, uh, some possible gain there. And by half, right? So by, by uh, halving that size, the gain essentially dropped in half. Now let's make him 10 ohms again and make this guy, instead of 10 ohms, five ohms. Well, now he can get two amps to go through and before he gets 10 volt drop. So now this guy gets twice as much voltage drop across it. Now this guy gets the same voltage, but this guy gets twice as much. So essentially what that means is that this guy has a two, uh, you know, it, the gain is, is this guy divided by this guy. When they're even, it's kind of gain of one. When this guy is 10 and this guy's five, He's getting twice the voltage, so he's got twice as, you know, I mean, we're getting twice as much uh, change. So we're changing 
I said I should say we're the change is by two. Okay, so if we drop this by th third or fourth, this guy's doubling by th you know that he's going up third or fourth. Okay, so he's got more and more voltage drops. So this guy's dropping down. So as this guy goes up, this guy's going down and down. And and whenever the signal goes up here, this guy goes down. That's the whole idea. So um, by dropping more voltage here, he's getting closer to where he wants to be by a 2x factor I mean by by the same ratio right so it's the so all right so I hope you understand that and I don't know if I made that very clear but um, so the gain is roughly this guy divided by this guy okay all right so now let's take another step let's say that instead of this guy having to operate between plus V and ground, we want to put a minus voltage here, have a plus minus voltage rail. So this guy we could make operate around zero volts, you know, virtual ground. Okay, he's virtually zero. We're going to say ground zero. So if we make this guy operate around zero, he's virtually ground. Okay, so um, and if we could do that perfectly, we wouldn't need that capacitor out there. Now, the benefit of that is now we can operate a lot lower frequency and we don't need a capacitor in our signal path, okay? Now, that'd be ideal whether we get there or not. That's another question, but at least if we get close to that, that's all the better, right? When you do choose this capacitor, if you have a large DC voltage on that, you need a large vo uh, voltage value capacitor here, which is, a, is not ideal. Okay, so the closer you get this to zero, the better you are, okay? Then you're only worrying about some small DC offset maybe. So even if you still need the capacitor, it's still a better choice of capacitor you have. All right, so let's just say this is now a negative voltage. And this guy is still driving to ground. He's still a drive chip that has, he operates between whatever he can put out and his ground signal. Well, that makes it kind of interesting because now this Kirchhoff's voltage loop's not the same. Now this guy's a different level. All right, so if this is at negative voltage and this is still at ground, and as you drive this guy on, there's gonna be some voltage level that at some point, because of these resistors, that this guy comes to some balance point. So let's say this is Ah, that plus 30 and let's say this is minus 30 well at some point the voltage drops are going to equalize where wherever that virtual ground is there's going to be a certain drive there that only lets so much current through okay so even though it's not referenced to this point it's still it's a virtual ground and and the voltage drops between these things is going to end up with some kind of voltage there so at some point that guy's going to regulate all right let me show you a little bit more of the circuit and see if it makes more sense all right i'm back <laughs> got a little bit more ink on the page here all right what i did is i've broken this up into two resistors r source one r source two and then i've added a couple filter capacitors from the supplies and I made this negative supply so each supply to ground has a bulk capacitor so C bulk 1 C bulk 2 okay so we got our, our ground reference here we have a ground reference here that our input drive signal is referenced to so just looking at this thing you don't put any signal in it over here at all okay start off there so nothing, you don't put any signal in, and what's gonna happen? Well, this guy's just floating out, kind of connected over here, so he's got, you know, 60 volts here and 60 volts there. So he's got to drive on him, because he's, you know, even if he's just a ground reference here, if there's no current flow or anything like that, uh, he's going to sit there and let's just say he's a basically ground potential, okay? Well, then that means you got between there and here, you got 60 volts. So that's gonna turn him on. 
and he's going to get current and he's going to flow through these resistors. Here's another thing. Let's say all three of these resistors are the same value. Okay, so for now, let's just say that each one is 10 ohms. Make that math easy again. Okay, so we got 10 ohm, 10 ohm, 10 ohm. Well, this guy, he's going to put enough current in there so that eventually this guy's going to flow just below zero volts say two volts below zero once he's two volts below zero then he's going to start turning this guy off so this guy's going to be on current flows develops voltage across here and this guy's uh, two volts below ground okay so then he he's just sitting there idling and whatever that thing is let's just say that that uh, dropped one amp through here so we got 20 volts here now here's another thing we got 60 plus 60 so we got a total of 120 volts all right so if we got 120 volts and we got four elements in between we divide that up into four so that's 30 volts for each one so let's just say we're going to do that so if they're 10 ohms you'd actually have uh a lot of current right you'd have three amps going in there to get 30 30 and 30 so that's that's real high current but that's just to illustrate my point so you divide uh this up and basically this is your your ground well and if that's ground you're not gonna you know you're gonna get a little bit less than even voltage across these let's say each one of these have because these two are the same value as this guy so the same currents flowing through them so this guy's going to have to have a, something a little bit different than these guys, you know, if you're going to have 60 here and 60 here. So it might not be exactly 60 because that drive, say, 2 volts, 3 volts to turn that on. But you get my point, right? You get my idea, I think, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and so, so it's kind of cool. So he's just sitting there balancing. Things are just running. And then all of a sudden you come up and start wiggling that. Then this guy's going to wiggle. And now we got that gain thing again, right? Okay. And I just said these are all the same value. So if they are, now we got that problem where instead of having a gain, if this resistor, if the gain is this resistor divided by now the combination of these two resistors, these are twice as much as that. So now we got a gain of, we don't have a plus gain, we have a minus gain. We're, we're dividing by half. So that's not what we want. So how do we solve that? The other thing is our output is an inverse of our input. That's not awesome either. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Wow, look at this. I duplicated my circuit. Now, the one part I kind of ran out of room here is this is my other half of my VN circuit, okay? This is VN plus, and then this is VN minus. So I'm putting my power, my, my sine wave, from here to here. So I'm, you got it? <laughs> so it's not from here to ground, okay? When I hook up my generator, I take my plus lead here, I take my minus lead there. So if I was doing my PCB board, which you'll see, uh, this would be the plus connection, this would be the minus connection. My output, this would be the plus, and this would be the minus. Because remember, this is out of phase, right? This drops down, so that's going to be negative. That's going negative, and this guy is going to be the opposite of this guy. So if this guy goes down, this guy's going to go up. So this would be my positive. He will be in phase with this. Otherwise, the circuit works the same. You turn them both on, they both idle the voltage here, here. Be the same. The voltage to be divided up the same. Okay. Now, let me draw something here that's important. Okay. Be right back. I'm back. <laughs> All right. I added a couple things, except for I forgot something important. Forgot to put my dot showing I have a connection. That's an important thing. I was in a hurry. Sorry. Okay. Now I have these resistors across here. I'm going to explain that. Um, 
and I put my minus symbol here, VN minus, VN plus, show you how the leads connect. And I drew a circle around the minus voltage here, just around the polarities. I forgot to draw one on this. Plus polarity, minus polarity, plus, minus. Okay? Those are our voltage polarities. All right. Now the gain was this guy divided by this, right? Well, these guys, if you go through the power supply, are connected in series. These guys here are in parallel to these two guys. So putting these two guys here gives a sneak path for our, our uh, AC portion of our waveform. And this guy starts to shake. He can let some current go through here. And this will give us our gain. So now the gain will basically be these guys in parallel to these two guys. Now the reason there's two, whenever you put a pot in your circuit, it's good to have a resistor in series with it. So if this ever goes down to zero, like you could take this all the way this way, then that zero, then you short this. You don't want that. So you put some uh, minimum resistor here so that you have, if you ever do that, you got the minimum resistance. And in that case, when the resistors get small here, your gain's big. So when you go that way, if you go all the way, you got a huge gain. And you don't want it short because that's gigantic gain. So yeah, that limits your max gain. And then when this changes then and it gets big, then basically these resistors start to show up. Because when these are small, they, they kind of make those guys kind of more disappear, right? The parallel values. So yeah, anyway, these guys are going to be somewhat small in value in comparison to these. And the gain will essentially be, uh, you know, this divided by these. Kind of, sort of. All right, so we're going to jump into the simulation now. Now that I think, he, you know, you can kind of see this is pretty much all the circuit. I got my 1,000 mic uh, bulk capacitors. Now one thing we're going to add in our real circuit, we're going to put a resistor between the voltage and this rail here between that and the thousand mic cap and the reason why just a small value like a 20 ohm because uh that look that current that's flowing down into here uh that thousand mic cap will hold that nice and steady and if we put a resistor there any fluctuations uh, that resistor will help filter out so it'll be just a little bit of an rc filter okay same thing on this side little resistor same thing but invert inverse and I showed the cap pointing down ground. These two points are tied together, tied to this guy. All right, so let's go look at the schematic the way it was sent to me. You know, the kind of schematic you'd expect to see uh, before you go to PCB board layout. And then we'll go to the simulation schematic. And video is kind of getting long, so we'll just simulate some of this stuff. Uh, we're going to see what the powers are here and what the gain is. We're going to play with that part, and then we'll we can do a whole bunch more stuff later. Okay. And meanwhile, anybody who wants a circuit, email, give me an email. I'll send them the circuit so they can play with it in microcap. All right. Okay, guys. Hey, I hope you like the video and uh, give a thumbs up. And let's jump into simulation. Okay. Thumbs up really helps video. So smash that button. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, this is the schematic that you might see in a schematic entry software. Uh, everything is here. Over here on the left corner, there's mounting holes for, like, say, your board. But you have your plus 60, your minus 60, your two voltage rails, plus your, your ground, right? So that would be coming from your power supply. You'd also have two pins for your uh, positive input, your negative input and your positive output and your negative output. So you need uh, some connectors on here. Otherwise, this looks pretty complete. You've got all your parts in here. Um, everything's connected up. Now, this schematically looks great. The thing is though, for our simulation, I'm gonna leave off the LED and resistor since we can't see the brightness. You know, doesn't really matter what the value is for our simulation purposes. We could put them in there, but I think for now I'll leave them out. Okay, now here's your, uh, you know, your circuit. It's symmetrical, right? Right and left is is 
identical, just flip-flopped. And on the left, we're going to bring in our plus input. And on the right, we're going to bring in our negative input. So it'd be nice to bring our negative input over here and to have our plus, you know, our two inputs right next to each other. And then for our outputs, put them over on the output side, right? So bring the negative out, bring it over here. So that's what I'm going to do on our simulation schematic. And I'm just going to copy all the values of all these components and uh, go ahead and do that. So let's go to our schematic on our uh, simulation. All right, guys, so this is a schematic that I came up with in MicroCap. It looks a lot like the one we saw before, right? Except for now, what I've done is I put this voltage source in here, this, uh, like a battery, because we just need 60 volts. And I got the negative tied to the negative rail and the plus to ground. And then over here, I got a plus 60 volts, so I got the plus feeding in and the negative to ground, right? So it's you know it's my split voltage plus to ground ground to minus okay so that gives me my plus minus 60 volts the other thing is i have my input voltage source here now see there it is if i hover over it, it shows me what it is and i've got it connected a positive end and the negative terminal right here tied to the negative end so i got my voltage across here my output, I got this negative terminal wrapped around to the bottom of this load resistor, RL, or R load, 100K ohm. I just put a high value there, kind of match this guy. Uh, anyway, you know, it's between this guy and this guy, there's actually this 100K and that 100K in series, so that's like 200K. So I put, you know, 100K in parallel to those two 100Ks, right? So it's like having a 200K in parallel with 100K. Anyway, I felt like this was a high impedance, so I'm not really changing the output of this. They're still pretty high values. Right now, I got zero volts in this. See, the DC is zero, the AC is one, but we're gonna do a transient analysis. And the transients rest this thing and it's zero. And I'll double click on that. And of all these tabs, different types of voltage sources, like on your generator, I've got sine wave chosen, DC is zero, AC is one, but we're not doing AC, we're gonna do transient, and that's this guy. And see when I hover over these things, this window down here, we'll show you what those things are. So right now, it's set at 1K, but zero volts out. So let's just see where our operating points are when we're, you know, not doing anything. Okay, let's come up to analysis and let's run a transient analysis. Okay, now through my window over here, I'm gonna come over to the plus minus and then the auto scale F6. Okay, so it's waiting for me. See, it's got my voltage probe. It's the transient, the analysis is done. It's just waiting for me to click on something. That thing's highlight green still, but let's come over to the output. Let's just see what's on our output. Now sometimes it's hard to click on if you're not if you're zoomed out like I am on this uh, on my laptop. I'm just on a small computer, so I'm gonna zoom in, scroll over there. I'm using my touchpad, not a mouse, so it makes it a little bit harder. But okay, so if I hover, see it shows me all those that information. You notice the current it says femtoamps, power dissipation 1.4. And it's like to the minus 30 power. <laughs> and the voltage is 375 femtovolts. So I'll click on it and look at that. Pico. Look, I'm plus or minus 8 picovolts. And that noise might be coming from the FETs, maybe. I don't know where, you know, well, if I hover over the, the FET, it shows me a whole lot of information. Uh, one of the things it tells me is power dissipation. Right now I'm. If you notice down near the bottom, I'm 1.2 watts. That doesn't sound good. I'm not doing anything. But, you know, it's like a class A amp, right? So it's doing a lot of power. Okay, these questions, let me, sorry, let me scroll over here. Uh, we're going to answer these questions except for the second one. We're going to save that for another video because that's going to take a little time just to do that by itself. Okay, the first one is how much current is coming from each rail? And... 
the third one here is, okay, so how much uh, current is each of these resistors pulling? Because the current, you know, it's going to be different, right? And then um, see how much gain. Okay. Now, one thing about the current, we want to know if we're choosing the right resistor values. So we're dissipating, you know, they don't run too hot, right? So here, let's, now I can click on them. We can look at waveforms and we're going to do that. But what I'm going to do first is show you this cool thing. Let's just come up here to powers. Click on that. And then look, it shows me the powers on everything. And when I'm running a kind of steady state like this, this, this is a little bit more meaningful. Sometimes you're doing transient analysis too short a time, the numbers might not mean as much. So you got to be careful. But look at this, 123 milliwatts on this resistor. And if I just hover, it shows me all that information for that resistor. One of the 750 ohms is, oh, look at that, just over a watt. And it's got 28 volts on it. See that? And then if I come down on one of these resistors down here, same thing. And why is that? Because the current, here, let's, I'll tell you what, let's, well, let's finish looking at the powers. Look at the transistor here, 1.2 watts. So we got one watt on this 750, uh, 1.2 on that, one watt on this guy, one watt on this guy. All these power parts, we have one watt, except for these small, you know, small value resistors. They're only 22 ohms, so they're not dissipating very much power. Okay, now look at the input power, 4.48 uh, watts, and same thing with this guy down here. Okay, so yeah, we got like almost, yeah, we got around nine watts of input power between our two supplies. Okay, let's turn off the power. And see this one with the arrow? That's current. See the, when I hover, it tells me, so I click on that. Now look, it tells me the currents everywhere. 74.7 milliamps. So now we know how much current. We know how much power. You know, you want at least a half watt. I'd put a one watt resistor here. And then these guys are one. Man, I'd probably want three watts of resistance. Four watts resistance there. Pretty decent sized resistors, right? Um, look, 37 milliamps. So that current came down, split this way, and went this way comes down and look, you know, the voltage here and here is balanced. So through here we got 0.24 femtoamps. <laughs> now this is with perfect value. If these tolerances are off a little bit, you're going to get a little bit of flow, right? So yeah, and then you get your 740 milliamps back rejoined after all that back through here. So pretty interesting stuff. I want to show you something else. See that one with the check mark? conditions kind of tells you your active parts look at that that guy's hot it says he's hot because he's got what 1.2 watts on it so these guys are going to want heat sinks right and then these diodes are turned off and that's a good thing because they should be they should be uh, reverse biased right now because we're not putting any signal in we're not clipping we're not doing any of that stuff so okay pretty interesting stuff let's turn that off and here, what I want to do is, whoops, let's go back to our voltage probe right there. We're still on our voltage probe, actually. So let's just see what the voltage is right here. You know, this is the kind of the input to the negative output. And this is the input to the positive output. It's the, it's the drain of each one of these FETs. Let's just look at that signal. Okay, you see that down here? Over here, it says 30 volts. We're on separate y-axes, right? If we wanted to put them on the same, we'd we'd have to come up here and say scope, come down here and say enable the same, so they're all on the same scale. But when you put them on opposite scale or separate scales, like I have, then you can each scale auto zooms for that. So look at this, thirty point three two all the way up, and you see the noise right there. It's just you know, same kind of noise what we're seeing there, right? Okay, let's go over here and click on this side. And basically the same thing, and they should be. And see the scales? It's putting different scales for each one, but if, you know. Anyway, so yeah, so you're getting the idea. Now if I come down here to the bottom, let's see what we got here. And look at this over here, 2.29 volts. So 2.29, that's what I'm guessing the gate threshold voltages on that fat. 
Okay, let's try this guy. See the black one went right over the pink? Same thing. Okay, now here, you know what I'm gonna do? I just wanna show you something. Delete all curves. Let's delete all of them. Let's start over. This time I just wanna show you if we came down here and say uh, same scales for everything we click on. Okay, now let's do that again. Let's click on the output. Okay, there we go. There's that plus minus eight pico volts. And then let's click on this one. And now look, they look like straight lines because they would, because now we're zoomed out. This one's up here at 27.66 and yeah. Okay, let's click on this resistor and he dropped right on top of that one. So same voltage drop because it's the same current. So you'd expect that. And this guy should be exactly the same. So see all three of those voltages are sitting right here. Before you could see that fuzziness, that you know, that noise, and they look slightly different because each one had all the scales slightly different. But yeah, so there you go. Um, and then the voltage on this resistor you'd expect to be zero. So it'll be right on top of this uh, blue one down here. Watch. Yeah, the black one just right on top of the blue one right here. There's zero. This is balanced. All right, so now let's put some voltage in here and see what changes, okay? Now let's just, here, I'm going to get a cursor just so we can get exact voltage reading on that. And let's assign, see, the cursor assigned itself to that. So let me come down here to one of these other voltages, like, yeah, like that one. And it's 28 volts. Okay, so each one of those resistors has 28 volts. All right, so let's do this again. And let's come up here to the selection and double click on that guy. And let's add a volt to it this time. Let's put a volt in. Okay. And went ahead and reran the uh, simulation for me. Now, now we got wiggles. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, look at this. The input is, you know, that's that should be one volt. And look, those uh, resistors up here, we got some wiggles on them now. You know what? Uh, let me just zoom in here. I'll hit the plus. Now see, we're here. I'm going to go backwards, okay? Hit the back button. And I'm going to disable the Y scaling so now it only scaled the x that guy so now let me zoom in again whoops you gotta turn on the x must have turned it off okay and then see we just spread out the x yeah um now let's zoom in on let's let's get rid of these waveforms and start whoop i'm dragging my cursors around Okay, let's get rid of these waveforms and let's just start over. Delete all curves. Let's go to the voltage probe right here and let's go probe our input voltage. Okay, and let's get our magnifying glass and zoom in on that input voltage. Okay. All right, so um okay guys uh had to enable that so i could pull that up okay so that's you know what is that one volt peak peak that's what we'd expect because that's what we told to do so let's go to the output and see what it is okay it kind of shifts it down to the bottom of my screen every time okay there we go um, there's that one volt peak peak and what is our gain? Let's get our cursors. Let's get, they're both assigned to the blue. You can see that. Let's get our right one assigned to the red, I think. Hit the left or the right button. And so now my left will be on input. My right will be on my output. I could hit this, uh, Let's see this peak thing right here. Make sure they're on the peak. 
Okay, they're both at 1.93 seconds, so they're in phase. It looks like they're in phase, they're crossing, but yeah, that just verifies it. This one's 997.89 volts, and this one's 3.9, so almost a gain of four there, guys. And we got a 300 ohm resistor. So you know what? Let's come over here and make this, let's make this guy bigger. Let's go, I think 750. Something like that was close to gain of two, I think it was. So I hit return and it'll give me the spinning wheel and just did the math for me. Let me hit the cursor right here, the peak, and it puts them at peaks. And so this one's 999, this one's all the way over here. What the heck? Let's get this one on the screen over here. And hit the peak button again. There we go. Gain of two point, or outputs 2.148. So yeah, pretty close to gain of two. So we went from 750 ohm to 300 ohm. Okay, now they showed a 500K in here. That seemed pretty large when I first looked at it. You know, right now we're both under, you know, from 750 to 300, we dropped from gain of four to two. So what if we change this to, let's just say we had a 5K pot. Let's, let's put 5K here. Spinning well, okay, we dropped our gain, but look, we still have some voltage, our output voltage, or it's just, yeah, you know, it's less than our input, but it's still got a little bit, you know. So, yeah, let's do the 500K there, just to see if we're maxed out value. And look at that, it only dropped that much. So, it's interesting, right? Um, it gets pretty sensitive up around 1K, uh, just under 1K, but as you drop the gain, you know, you have to drop this quite a bit to, to make a difference. And this is 1.5K here, and this 1.5, so basically 3K wrapped around here, 10 times that is 30K, so that changes, you know, that's about a 10% change. So yeah, you really have to go to sit like 600K to change it another 10%. So that's what's going on there. And that's why we like to use log uh, pots for these things, logarithmic pots. Okay, let's go to the power dissipations, guys. Sorry, let's just hit this button. Look at 123, uh, 1, 1 1.2. So it doesn't really matter what your signal is. You're going to dissipate about the same power, right? So every, all the powers look like they're about the same. It's pretty interesting stuff, huh? You know what? I want to show you something. Let's go delete all curves. And let's turn off this power thing. And I'm going to probe voltage. Let's get this voltage probe back here, right? And I'm going to just probe the voltage coming in here. And I just want to show... That this thousand mic cap is doing its job. Whoa, we got a sine wave. Let's zoom in on that. That should be flat. It shouldn't be a sine wave. Let's zoom in on this guy. Ah, but look over here. Even though it looks sinusoidal, look at this 1.65, 1.65. That voltage area here, let's get our cursors out just to check it out. We'll peek this guy out, and then we'll get this guy over here on the negative peak here. Let me get a negative peak. All right, guys, let's see what the differential is. The delta right here, look at that, 67.77 picovolts. So I'd say that's pretty flat. <laughs> if you zoom in enough, you might see something, but that's pretty darn flat that thousand mic cap is doing its job now here's the deal let's look at this thousand mic cap this thousand mic cap is like a perfect capacitor there's no esr right so you know what we could do that for another simulation and maybe you guys could play with that on your own for now but I'll, I'll, we can investigate this, okay? We'll do that for next video. I just wanted to give you a peek. So give you something to play with. All right, okay. I think that'll do it for this one. I think we answered uh, the questions there.
and hope you like that and just by using this over and over kind of re-showing i'm kind of duplicating some of the things i've been showing you but hopefully that's helping uh learn the tool a little bit better hey guys uh class a amp needs more work i'm going to get this thing going and uh I hope that preamp is a good fit for this. What do you guys think? And uh, let me know. Uh, give me a thumbs up. And that was Dash Puppy that sent that in. Way to go, Dash Puppy. Thumbs up to you. Appreciate all the Patreons. Appreciate everybody for watching the videos. And really stoked about the new videos coming up. I got to get more time, get more videos out. I'm going to work on that. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. All right. Well, um... Our amplifier, yikes, that scared the crap out of me. <laughs>